Hello and welcome to this fourth and final example of finding the response in second order systems. And in this example, we are going to look at an overdamped circuit um, compared to the previous videos where we've looked at critically damped and underdamped RLC circuits. So here we're going to have the same circuit as we saw previously. I'm assuming that you've watched the previous videos. Uh, we're going to jump straight into this last example, but if you're unfamiliar with the topic, it's worth going back and watching those videos first. But we are going to keep um, our example pretty much the same. It's the same RLC circuit and the output is the voltage measured across the capacitor here. The only thing that we're going to change is the value of this resistance. And in our previous examples, we've used different values of resistances for critically damped and underdamped cases. Here, we're looking at an overdamped case, and so we're going to change that value again. The circuit values that we're going to use in this particular example are um, the resistance R being 500 ohms, L is going to stay the same as the previous examples, 36 millihenries, and C, the capacitance is going to stay the same as well, 10 microfarads. So just to recap, one of the things that we mentioned previously is that we're going to use the root finding method to derive the um, particular case that we're, we're going to be in, and we're expecting to be in an overdamped case here. But one of the things that we said was using this um, root finding equation here, or in particular, the uh, discriminant of that equation, the, the, the bit that's under the, the root here, um, we said that if the circuit is overdamped, the value of that discriminant, so um, the value of R over 2L all squared minus 1 over LC, the value of that discriminant there will be greater than zero. And we said if that's the case, then our result must take the following form, and it's this equation here, Vc of t, um, which is the voltage across the capacitor, the output voltage, so this is the expression for the response or the output, Vc of t is equal to Vs plus A1e to the S1t plus A2e to the S2t. So we said that's the form that our solution is going to take, uh, but we don't know uh, some of the values in here. S1 and S2 are the two possible roots of the equation, which we're going to find using this root finding um, equation here. And the constants A1 and A2 we need to find as well. But we know at least that the, 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 the um, equation is going to take this form, providing that this is true, that the, the discriminant is going to be greater than zero. So first of all, we've set our component values to be an overdamped case, but let's just check that that is true. Uh, we should find this discriminant is greater than zero. So there we have it again, but let's substitute our circuit values in place. We'll get something that looks like this. Um, we can simplify a little bit, but we end up with a value of something around uh, 4.5 times 10 to the 7. I'm not really bothered what that value is uh, numerically, it's just the fact that it's greater than zero. So we're clearly in an overdamped case here, uh, or an overdamped condition. And that means we're going to be using um, this formulation for the expression for our result. Okay, so we're satisfied that we're in an overdamped case. We're going to be using this expression here, but we don't know the values of some of these constants here. And so let's begin with finding the roots of the equation first, because we've already defined the, the root finding equation above. Um, let's see it again here. And all we're going to do is, again, it's just component values here, R and L and C. We're going to substitute those in place, and we'll end up with a little bit of simplifying. We'll end up with something that looks like this. And obviously, we've got a plus or minus in the equation there. So we're going to get two results, either whether that's a plus or whether that's a minus. And we end up with two um, results here that come to minus 202.966 or minus 13,685.9. So these are our two roots. And we're going to give these the, the, the names of S1 and S2. And so they can go in our equation. 
like this. Okay, let's make the assumption again that our supply voltage, the same as our previous examples, we used a step input of 5 volts at time equals 0 seconds. And so Vs takes the form of a constant, um, a constant of 5. If you're not sure about the inputs and input types and what we mean by a step input and that kind of thing, again, we've, we've discussed that in previous videos, so it's worth going back to review those if you're not sure. But here we have our expression as it stands now. We still don't know the values of these two constants, A1 and A2. And what we're going to do is we're going to find those constants because we're going to assume that we have um, initial conditions of zero. In, in all of our examples thus far, we've, we've, we've mentioned that we're assuming that we have um, zero for our initial conditions. And so that helps us to simplify a little bit and work out these two unknown constants here. So what I mean by that is we're going to make the assumption here that when t equals zero, the output equals zero. And so what we can do is we can substitute, that means Vc of t, um, that output voltage Vc is going to be zero when t equals zero. So I'm substituting zero on the left hand side there, but I'm also substituting zero for all the instances of t in our equation. And so what we have here is now two instances where we have e raised to the power zero because we're multiplying by zero in each instance. So e to the power zero is just one or anything to the power zero is one. So really we're multiplying both these constants a1 and a2. We're just multiplying them by one because both of those exponential terms there have just reduced to one. And so that simplifies a little bit. We've got zero equals vs plus a1 plus a2. Uh, which means that minus Vs is equal to A1 plus A2. And what we just said before, we, we've we already said that the, the supply voltage is, is just a constant of 5, 5 volts, uh, minus Vs in this case. So minus 5 is equal to A1 plus A2. Okay, so that kind of partially helps us. We've got an expression there in terms of A1 and A2, but we still don't know the values of A1 and A2. To find those similar to our previous examples, we're going to differentiate the expression, and that's hopefully going to help us um, come up with another uh, equation which we can use to try and solve for these two unknown constants. If we differentiate this expression, we will see something like this. So just as a reminder, when we differentiate uh, an exponential term such as this, all that happens is we end up multiplying by the coefficient of the, the, the variable, in, in our case t, the coefficient of t. We're, we're going to multiply that because we're differentiating with respect to t. Um, and so we end up with, in each case, we've multiplied um, by that coefficient. So we have minus 202.966 A1 A to the power minus 202.966 T. And again, we had A to the power minus uh, 13,000 and so on. So we've multiplied. We have minus 13,685.9 A2 A to the minus 13,685.9 T. Okay. Again, we're going to assume those initial conditions. Not only do we assume that the, um, the the voltage across the capacitor is zero at time t, like we did earlier, but we are also going to assume that the, the differential of, of that um, voltage at time zero is also zero. So there's no rate of change in that, um, that output voltage at time equals zero. And so again, we're going to substitute those initial conditions. That differential on the left-hand side is going to become zero. Uh, and any instances of time are also going to become zero. We have the same case here where e to the power of zero in both cases here is going to become one. And so that simplifies to zero equals minus 202.966 A1 minus that 13,685.9 A2. Or we can rearrange to say that um, 202.966 A1 is equal to minus 
13,605.9A2, which has added the A1 term to both sides there. So now again we've got another equation in terms of A1 and A2, but it doesn't tell us what A1 and A2 are, but together those two equations that we've now derived present us with two simultaneous equations, both in terms of A1 and A2. We've got these two equations here, and the easiest way to solve these is probably to substitute equation 1 into equation 2, because equation 1 is a little bit simpler. We said minus 5 equals A1 plus A2. We could rearrange that into A1 equals minus 5 minus A2. And so what that means is that we can now come to this second equation, and rather than our A1 term, we're going to substitute, because we've said A1 is equal to minus 5 minus A2, where we had A1, we're going to replace that now with minus 5 minus A2. And that's equal to uh, that minus A2 term here, minus 13,685.9 A2. And we can expand, we've got a bracket here on the left-hand side, we can expand that a little bit. Um, because we're multiplying 202.966 by minus 5 and by minus A2. So we have these two terms uh, as a result of expanding those brackets. Uh, we can add this A2 term, minus 202.966 A2. We can add this, and again, doing that to both sides, we'll end up with something like this. And finally, we can divide both sides by that minus 13,482.2 to get an expression for A2. It's going to be the division here, which comes out as roughly 0 0.0753, at least rounded to a few decimal places there. So equation 1 told us that A1 and A2 must add up to minus 5. So we've already said that A2 is 0 0.0753 or thereabouts. That means that A1 must be equal to minus 5.0753. Um, if that's to be true, if A1 and A2 must add up to minus 5. We could put this another way. We could say, here, here's our first equation again. Minus 5 equals A1 plus A2. We agree that A2 is 0 0.0753. So there it is there. And we could just rearrange that. Um, to say that A1 must be equal to minus 5 minus 0 0.0753. I've just subtracted that 0 0.0753 from both sides there. We end up with um, A1 being equal to minus 5.0753. So our equation is now complete since we found the values of S1 and S2 earlier. We've also now found the values of these constants A1 and A2. And so if we return to our original equation here, we can substitute those in. We'll see something that looks like this. So now that we've determined the expression here for the output response of the circuit, the output across the capacitor here, it's helpful to visualize this like we've done with our previous examples. Here is the result of our overdamped circuit. And what we see is something like this. And looking at that, if you've been following our previous videos, this looks a lot like our critically damped uh, graph that we saw in a previous video. It's probably more helpful now that we've seen all three examples. We've seen a critically damped, we've seen an uh, underdamped, and now we've seen this overdamped. It's probably helpful to see them side by side because we'll see actually there's a, there's a big difference um, here. Uh, was our original critically damped um, response that we saw a few videos ago. And what we said was that the, the definition for the critical damp, uh, the critical damping is that it returns to a steady state in the lowest possible time. Um, we see if we try to reach this, the, the steady state um, or the target value of 5 in this case, the supply voltage of 5, if we try to approach that more quickly, we end up with this overshoot, and that was the underdamped condition. Um, and we end up with this sort of ringing or this oscillation before we reach the steady state. And similarly, similarly the overdamped case that we're looking at now, 
when we sort of see these side by side, we see it see it, it takes a long, uh, a much longer time to reach that steady state compared to what we saw in the critical uh, or the critically damped response. So by now, if you've been following these videos, we've seen um, and derived all three of these responses, critically damped, under damped and over damped, and hopefully it's been useful to see them side by side here. But remember, all we did was we adjusted the value of the resistance in each case um, to, to, to change those conditions. Um, but we can see that it makes a big difference to the expected response in this circuit.